Okay, here we are on the Buffs Club in Caffili. Uh, Black Friday is gone. We are now on a Wednesday night, isn't it? Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> Confused. It's Abitredo, not Caffili, but yeah, okay. Well, Abitredo, yeah. Okay, <laughs> Buffs Club in Abitredo. I bumped into uh, Terry Phillips. We all know Terry. Terry, you've seen the meeting, or you've heard yeah. the meeting, and you've watched the meeting tonight. What do you think of uh, the outcome? I think the same as everybody else. I'm desperately worried. I mean, I want to believe in Sam, but he, his credibility is, is, is struggling right now. Um, but I think from the fans' point of view, it's, it's got to be Cardiff City that is the, the main focus. Whatever is happening around it, whether the stadium goes ahead and you hear more doubts, etc., the club is what comes first so whatever happens the fans have got to stick together for the sake of the club the team have got to try and stay in the championship they need three more wins the players have got to stick together the fans have got to stick together and I think you can't really look beyond that the future is really at the moment just out of the fans control isn't it I mean other people the developers uh, the council have got more control than, and Sam Maman have got more control than anybody else do you think we're going to be getting rid of any other players by the end of this week by the end of this week, I hope not. I desperately hope not. I mean, it looks as though more may go, and they've said, um, apparently Capital and Regional have said that the date is, there's no definitive date for the start of the stadium, which will mean, uh, according to Sam, that more players may go. But hopefully not before, it, ideally not before next Wednesday when they've played another couple of games, and certainly not before Coventry. I mean, that would be a disaster if anybody went before Saturday. As far as the team goes, I mean, the spirit on the ground yesterday, or last Saturday, sorry, the way they played was phenomenal. Uh, they, everybody played for their shirt. Do you feel Absolutely. that way? Absolutely. The team were fantastic last Saturday. I just wish that in some ways, and I don't know any reasons why, that, that sort of spirit had been around all season because this team is good enough to have been a lot, lot higher in the division. But, I mean, they are where they are. They need three wins and they can certainly sort of climb out of trouble if they retain the spirit they had on Saturday. On a personal note, how long have you been supporting Cardiff City? I know, I realise that you're a reporter for the Echo and you do a cracking job. But the first thing I look for on the page is you, yeah. okay, uh, amongst everybody else. So yeah, it's starting as well. Now, obviously, no, we've no. been out together a few times. On a personal note, I know you are dedicated 100% to Cardiff City, and if anybody got a voice or gets near other players than anybody else, it's you as far as reporting goes. Is that right? Well, we do our best to cover. I mean, we work as a team at the Echo, and, and uh, Mark Bloom, Gavin Allen and myself work as a team. We try and balance the argument. Um, now, I tend to put myself into it. I come to the meetings, I come to the matches, I go to the reserve team matches, the youth team games. I go to everything because I want to know what's going on. Um, and that's just me. Um, but between us, I think we give a fairly decent coverage, you know, and we do our best, certainly. Whatever happens, we certainly do our best. Uh, and we think we get it across, you know. I have to ask you on a, on a personal note now, this is something yeah. that's going through my mind. Yeah. Obviously, you were the only one, I think you were the only one that interviewed uh, Kavanagh at the time when he found out he was going to go. Um, you spoke to him personally. Tell me how he felt. It wasn't me, it was Mark Bloom. Uh, <laughs> right. What we did, what we did, we, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the Echo led the way on that story all week from the unpaid wages onwards. Um, I mean, I, I found out about the unpaid wages first and then it's gone on from there. What we did the next morning, uh, sorry, the morning of the Kavanaugh thing, I was woken at half past 12 with a telephone call saying he was going. Um, I actually got the call at 11, then a voicemail called me back at half past 12 and I woke up. Um, and I was in at work at 6, we were all in at work um, and we all made, had certain things to do. Mark Bloom went for Cav and got him, it was a fantastic interview, um, but we, we led the way again on that one and, um, and, and Cav was desperately upset, I know he was, he didn't want to go. Um, now he's got a problem of course he's playing for Wig and he's got to do his best and he's on the fringe of the, prim of the premiership of course so fantastic but um, you know he, di he didn't want to leave he wanted to stay here but at that point how did you feel uh, you know obviously the news hit you you knew Kavanaugh was going what was your personal opinion then I was shocked I mean I was desperately shocked I, I woke up to the voicemail picked up my phone and there was a call saying Kavanaugh had gone and I didn't believe it and at half past 12 you can't really ring anybody to ask if if it's true so I got in at six and we were you know I rang a couple of people and woke them up uh, and it was indeed true and it was such a shock I mean just coming just before a game um, but the players responded superbly I thought I mean they gathered together and, and really came out and they got, they got the three points which leaves Cardiff with a chance of staying in the championship at the end of the game on Saturday obviously you were there with the press um, 
what sort of kind of well, what what feeling was what was it like? I mean, oh, Lenny was there left to answer the questions when he yeah. in in the uh, press meeting. I got to say mine. I thought Lenny done a cracking job. He's he's a pleasure to interview. Isn't yeah. He? So. yeah, Lenny wasn't left to do the interview. He wanted to do the interview that way. Oh, yeah. he, he he can field questions. At one stage, there were three people shouting questions at him. Um, but that doesn't faze him. Um, whatever you think of Lenny, and, and I've seen people say that Lenny's responsible for the financial crisis that's saying on the internet, he's the most prudent manager I've ever seen. He, he won't spend money where it's not needed. He makes decisions of his own back. Um, Sam doesn't interfere with team selection. He may have a big, big view on who you sign and who you sell, um, but actual team selection he doesn't. And, and Lenny does things his own way. He certainly handles his press conferences well, even in a crisis. He certainly comes through superbly. And the other thing is he always tells the truth. I did fall out with him oh, probably a couple of years ago about a certain factor I won't mention. And we had a discussion and he said he will never, ever lie to me. And as far as I know, he hasn't since. So. He is a pleasure. I, I mean, I've spoken to him on numerous occasions, and uh, he don't mix his words. He's he's he's, no. he's down worth like us, yeah. and he speaks true about what he does. And Saturday, for the pressure that he was under, and he went there. Well, as you said, admittedly, he said that he would do that press conference. Yeah. Obviously, Sam had left the ground, and he covered it well. Do you think? Yeah, no, he did absolutely. I mean, I've been doing this job 27 years for evening newspapers. Uh, and I've worked with people like Brian Clough, fantastic manager, um, but, but Lenny is up there amongst the best, certainly, um, and he's, he's one of the best. There you go, credit to him. So I'm going to ask you an awkward question now. Hello. If, um, and I mean if, and, and hopefully it doesn't yeah. happen, if, if the next player leaves the club by the end of this week, who do you think it's going to be? I don't know. I mean, the, you've got Tony Vidmar linked with Sunderland, James Collins with West Ham. Uh, but there, surely there is no pressure on, on the club for money at the moment. They've, they've paid the wages um, and they've got sort of a few weeks before new wages are due. So hopefully they'll be able to hang on to, to people, even if sales are needed, until next week. I mean, Coventry on Saturday is a massive game, isn't it? I mean, you can't, just can't afford to lose it. So, you know, you want to keep the boys together. They did so well last week and, and get, get them through that one. Uh, 1,300 fans so far bought tickets for Coventry travelling yeah. away with us. What, what's your opinions on that? Fantastic. I mean, uh, the more the merrier. But, it, but even better if, if loads of people turn up next week at Ipswich, the home game against Ipswich, really turn out and support the guys because, you know, they, they can... They can they only need three wins from 11 games, is it? And, uh, you know, if they can do that, probably stay up. As you said, if we play like we did last Saturday, I don't think we've got a problem. We? No, uh, no, they are certainly good enough. It's just getting a bit, a little bit of luck, and they're certainly good enough to stay out. Ted, yeah, thanks very much, man. A pleasure to interview, and I'd like to interview again if I get a chance. Yeah. Oh. No problem. Yeah. No problem. Okay, here we are on the buffs once again. Um, the meeting is finished, and uh, I'm joined here with Chris. Who Chris made a, a couple of valid points there. Chris, obviously you've been sporting Cardiff City a long time, and you are a member of the Rams. It's nice to speak to somebody who is a member and not, you know, sort of on the committee or, or a ref or whatever. And it, it, thanks for coming forward and let me have you with you. Uh, he's pulling my lead there as I talk to you. But uh, Chris, what do you think of uh, what, well, basically what's been happening over the last few days? Your opinion since Black Friday? I think um, since Friday, like everyone else, um, being a little bit, a um, little bit shocked about what's happened, although not totally surprised. Um, the level of what's happened, I think, has taken most people by surprise. And um, just like everyone else, I've been taken aback by it. Um, I would still, after everything I've heard since Friday, um, I've not heard anyone come forward with Plan B, um, which actually replaces Sam in any way or anything he's trying to do. So my own opinion at this moment in time that we have to stick with him. Um, and see what the next development is. I, I can't see, um, I've not read anything, I've not seen anything, no one's pending forward um, as, a, as an alternative. So um, Sam, for me, is still the way forward, but with, um, with great re reservation. If you had a choice of choosing a plan B, obviously you've done a little bit of thought, or you, you put a little bit of thought into it. What, what would your you you plan B be? Um, it's hard to say really because there, there seems to be only two real alternatives at the moment. Um, we've off, we obviously got no cash, um, we're selling players to, um, to finance the current situation. And is it, do we ask Sam to just say stop this now, let's call everything in, 
um, let's start again, let's lose 10 points. To me, it's not, it's not an option. Um, unless, unless he's prepared to take alternative finance from someone else, unless he's prepared to take um, someone else having a little bit more say in the board, um, there is no plan B. Do you think that um, he would swallow his pride if need be rather than send another player and maybe, you know, have money from somewhere else? I, I think he would do um, if it was done in a certain way. If <laughs> These people at this level and this power, they, there's all sorts of things that go on and I'm sure they can manoeuvre something that um, the Sam can come out of his credibility intact in a financial um, sense, not as um, he not have his credibility as far as supporters go. But within the business community, I'm sure something could be worked out. When you did Cavendon, uh, sorry, Kavanagh, uh, we talked about Cavendon early off camera, but when we heard, you heard about Kavanagh, um, well, the sale basically, you know, where, what time did you hear about it or where, where and when? I, um, I was up uh, late one night and um, I think um, Big Sam posted on the web that um, the Kavanagh was going, players were going, etc. And um, it, it was just, God, what's going on here, you know? It's, um, and the fact that the likes of um, Corky was on there and Steve Day made me think, well, it is serious. And to be honest, it was just a little bit thankful. It wasn't, it wasn't as bad the next day as it was, we thought, on the Thursday night. So you were obviously looking for, for worse when you woke up the next day? Yeah, I really was. I, I really thought that um, once, once it had started, I, I thought it was going to be a giveaway sale, for want of a better word. I, I, I thought Sam might have been vindic vindictively trying to, um, to put people's noses out of joint just to let, who, let people know who's in charge. Do you think he sacrificed him to make a point? I think that's um, I think that's a fair view. Um, I, I think more of the point was he was probably absolutely desperate for the money. But by um, by getting rid of um, or letting Kavanagh go, um, he really made a statement to people to say, well, this is my captain. If I can let my captain go, make sure about it. Any of you can go. Exactly. So stand up and get noticed that you know this is a serious situation. Then. If it would, have, you know, and I don't want to be um, derogatory because all our lads, they're great. We we all love our lads, but. If, if you just said let Andy Campbell go or something like that, people would have said, well, you know, they wouldn't. They, the impact wouldn't have been so great. It was Sam making an impact to say, you know, take notice, lads. This is what's going down. So, when you went to the ground on Saturday, obviously after the the Black Friday as we called it then, um, when you went to the ground, what sort of did you have any fears? Did you think that something was going to happen, or did you think they, you know, obviously we all knew we were going to go to the ground with a bad day, but. The, play, the team played well, but you know, give me an insight on how you felt that particular day. To be honest, I actually went on that day feeling um, a proud Cardiff City fan that um, no matter what happens to us, um, at the end of the day, we'll all come through it, we'll stick together, and we just um, support the 11 players who's on the pitch. Um, the politics off the pitch, um, well, that's left for another day, but the actual Saturday, it was just a fantastic day for supporters to show how they get behind the players on the on the on the pitch. How do you feel that Kavanagh after leave? All right, we knew that he was uh, he'd gone on the Friday, but he left so quickly, and we didn't, as fans, get a chance to see him off. Then, if you like, I think that is the um, that's the big disappointment of it. But on saying that, perhaps rather than seeing him one last time in a shirt, it might make, it might have made it even worse for the fans. You know, we didn't really have time to say to her, but we I think. The fact that he's coming back with Wigan, the fans will be able to show him in a better way how much we'll have missed him, how much we like him. Absolutely. Hey, listen, if there's anything else you want to say now before we go, um, uh, maybe your point of, of view uh, about what's, what's, what's going on down there and, and the future for the club. I, I, think, I think the future of the club is, is not assured in a positive manner, but the club will always be there. The club's bigger than anyone. It's bigger than Sam Man or any of us. Um, as, as a supporter... Um, all I say to people is, until something better comes along, this is what we got, this is what we got to stick at, and full support. So 1927 could come along? Um, it'll, hopefully it'll come along again in my lifetime. Yeah, I think it will. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Okay, once again we caught up with the legend, Peter. <laughs> Peter Morgan, yeah. Uh, Peter knew what was going on on Friday night early, wasn't it? Uh, about I had a phone call at mid afternoon. I got down to the meeting around about half past four, so I missed about the first half hour of the of the initial meeting. 
But um, I then went um, down to the hotel later, uh, which we stayed there until about 20 to 1 in the morning talking to Sam, four of us. And to be quite honest, though, I come out of that meeting none the wiser, as they say. And quite frankly, don't know what to believe. So when you met Sam that night, obviously it was a, a dramatic day for him. But, you know, uh, what was his, in your opinion, how, how did he look to you? He, he looked a bit tired, um, I suppose. Uh, he looked a bit stressful. We had a few tears. Um, no one likes to see a, a, a grown man cry in any shape or form, which he did. But I mean, were the crocodile tears or were the genuine tears? Wayne, I, I can't really answer that question. But all of this doesn't make any sense at all to me. So when you heard the camera had gone, what was your opinion? Well, first of all, when I had a phone call to say that um, Kavanaugh was gone, I just thought it was a joke when the boys messing about as you do. Know. And then through the telephone calls saying that, that Peter Thorne was off and um, party was going. And then I phoned Corky and he said, yep, yeah, it's true about Kavanaugh. And then I phoned Gwyn and he said, yeah, he was down the ground. And that's when I said, I'll be down there now. And uh, quite hard to take in. And, I, and it's still pretty hard to take in because... We're in a position where we, I think at the time before the game on Saturday, we were three or four points away from relegation. And all of a sudden, you sell your captain. It's not exactly a pleasant reading. And furthermore, you talk about going into administration gaining 10 points. Administration wouldn't matter because if you're going to sell all your players, we're going to go down anyway. Because if you can't stay up with a full squad, how are you going to stay up with half a squad? So... If we got any more players to go, I'm going to find it very difficult that we can that we can stay up. How did you find uh, going to the ground on Saturday after knowing what happened on Friday and knowing what we could possibly be faced with? Well, I thought I thought personally the fans were were, were great. I thought that um, to be quite honest, I was expecting him to have a more of a torrid time than he did. I mean, uh, my opinion on that, I thought he got off very lightly. But it was uh, what about that goal that went in on Saturday? Did that? Relieve you a little bit. Well, you saw a thing of mixed emotions in it on the day. I mean, everybody, everybody uh, was ecstatic. I thought the fans were fantastic in in terms of supporting their team. It's just what we needed. I know that you, one man don't make a side, but in the in the manner of of the way Kavanaugh went, being whisked away by helicopter, and the players haven't been paid for five weeks, and plus the general staff can't afford it. I find it rather distasteful. Uh, I think uh, you've got a general view on everybody there. Everybody feels the same way. It's been put right today, though. The, the staff has been paid. Um, the future of the club, we, none of us know what's going to be. But uh, what do you feel? How do you feel the future is going to go? Well, personal opinion, uh, if it's true what they said, they sold they sold uh, Kavanaugh for four hundred thousand pounds with a further two hundred thousand to come. And if the wage bill is correctly it's supposed to be seven hundred and eighty thousand pounds a month. We were already halfway into the second month, so what's going to happen in a fortnight's time? Are the wages going to be met in a fortnight? Do you think Sam should look for, for help from, from the other directors then? I think no one's too big and too clever to ask for help when you need it. But I mean, uh, at the end of the day, I don't know what the, the, the business side of all this really, well, this is where it all boils down to. But the worry for us fans is that this business decisions that could go on could end up ruining our football club. That's all I want to see, and everybody else in here and everybody else in Sports Cardiff City is a union front and people's wages being paid and an happy football club. So, in three games' time, and we've won the next three games, we should on paper make us safe as far as Cardiff City goes with um, uh, being dropped. We should be safe in that division. And we still face with the same situation. Would, would, would it sort of give us a, a breathing space for you? Well, no, I mean, the, the, the one good thing will come out of it if, if we do win them three games or possibly four games and we stay up. But I mean, it's in your quick fix. It's not solving a solution. I mean, everybody wants to know where our football club is going. And what I said to you only two minutes ago, if, for example, um, this development haven't been signed, they haven't ruled out any more players going, I'm asking you, who know your football, if we turn around and sell another two or three influential players, can you see us staying up? Personally, no. Not with what we got. We're using it. We're already using it, the youth of the team. Thank God they're doing well. But um, that's all I hope is that we, the club does well. 
that we stay where we are and we I hope that Sam's dream comes alive for the sake of us well I, I want to believe Sam a man I really do but also you've got to face realities and it's very it's looking very sus suspicious at the moment and until it all comes out in the wash, I don't think any fan is going to be none the wiser of the position. So, 1,300 tickets sold for next Saturday. How do you feel about that? Excellent. So we're travelling away with 1,300 fans on Saturday. That shows us that we are a strong club. It shows exactly that. We are a very strong club. Very strong club. But we are a very, very, very well-supported club. And if the club had been right, but I will say, the club haven't been run right for a long time. And if the club was run right, there'd be a lot more people going to that club anyway. Have you heard a rumour about the Kit Kat, Pete? Do you want to elaborate on that? <laughs> the only football club I know that can't sell you a Kit Kat because they counted them 20 minutes before full time. Grin asked for a Kit Kat, he was told he can't have one with his, and she said, There's none there, is it? Yes, she said, There's 64. He said, well, Why can't I have one? Because we're not allowed to have counted them. <laughs> so the auditors were in then, then? <laughs> Obviously, it looked anonymous from our point. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Pete. That's all we win on the weekend, man. Cheers, man. Okay, Carl, you were at the meeting tonight. Um, obviously, in light of what happened on the weekend, come to the meeting looking for some answers tonight, do you? Definitely looking for answer, for some answers, but uh, the problem is uh, at this moment in time, uh, is is no, nothing happening. Uh, we're all hoping that things do happen, but at this moment in time, is is no light at the end of the tunnel. I I, I can't see where we go in. I honestly can't see where we go in. Did anything positive come out of the meeting tonight in, in your eyes? Uh, no, no, no. Not even that the fans were united well, maybe? Well, the fans are united, but the, the trouble is if the fans are united and we have a club to support, how could they be united? At the end of the day, uh, Sam and Man's got the Trump card. And, uh, where do we go? If, if he decides to turn around, as we spoke about, the fans uh, reject him, He'll turn his back on us and, and can't the city uh, avoid it. So do you think that, um, you know, after the meeting tonight and also the, the fact that they threatened to get rid of a few players prior to this, it hasn't happened yet and we, we're, looking in, we, we're going into Thursday now. Do you think that's a good thing? Well, I, I can't honestly see where uh, selling our best players can help the club in, in the situation it is. Uh, the PFA have offered uh, to help our, uh, uh, the players in wages. Yeah, but the players have been paid now, so... I, I know they've been paid, but... And paid. the staff. I know the players have been paid and the staff, but the, the, the problem being, uh, Wayne, is um, by selling our good players, i.e. James Collins, uh, Gabadon, uh, Chris Barker, uh, I'm naming these people because they have been playing good football for Cardiff City this year, right? But why are you trying to sell them off at a, at a cheap, right? Uh, not to get, you know, if it was big millions and um, hitting big holes in the deficit in the club, they're fair enough. But the, 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 the problem is that for £350,000, it's a drop in the ocean. £350,000 compared against three million, uh, £30 million, it's not making any hole in it. Um, uh, the other point is, if these players like playing for Carlos City... Do you uh, feel that the 330 uh, million is based on the debt of the new ground? Obviously, I can't... Do you seriously think that the ground isn't going to go ahead now? Um, it's hard to say, Wayne. It's hard to say. Uh, at, at, at the end of the day, he's, he's trying his hardest to uh, try and get uh, uh, the rope around every, uh, every point, but... So from, so from Sam's point of view there, do you appreciate him for that? Yeah, you know, and we all know that he, he's brought the club from uh, the lower parts of the division and put us where we are today, but the trouble is he, he, he have said things in the past, what he's going to do and what he's going to give, and, and they are never materialised. If we look at Wimbledon and we look at Cardiff City and we compare them, um, they Sam Man bought Wimbledon when they were nobody, they were in the uh, non-league, weren't they? And he took them from the non-league to the Premiership and they won the FA Cup. Um, and then, of course, he sold them over grand, grand, ground issues. But he sold them and he made a tremendous profit. So, with a track record like that, everybody um, welcomed with open arms, apart from the fact that, you know, there was a problem with the ground. When, 
when he did leave the club, he left on bad terms, but he came to Cardiff City with his millions. Do you feel that because of what he's done for that club, he's turned them around? All right, they've slipped back down the divisions now, and they've also gone into the Wimbledon Dons. Do you feel that with that sort of experience, do you think that he could be and still be good for the club? Yeah, but the, the point is, you just mentioned his millions, but at this moment in time, we're asking what millions? Uh, has he got any millions? That is one question to be asked, right? Um, and the other point is, with uh, the likes of Plow Lane and Wimbledon, uh, what I heard on GDFM on uh, Monday night, apparently uh, he sold uh, the ground to Ruddock Holdings, and then Wimbledon uh, FC had to lease the ground back off him. So, you, you, you know, um, it was a mention that he was a chairman of uh, Ruddock Holdings. I think and it was mentioned tonight that his brother was, wasn't it? Well, this is the problem. Uh, as, uh, the but it was a Keith, family affair. Yeah, but this is, this is it. Keith Cooper been asking, who are Ruddock Holdings? Um, Quite a few people have been asking that. Huh? That's right. But it was mentioned on uh, Monday night. Uh, there's been uh, money taken out of the accounts in Cardiff City uh, around 580,000 every so given months and whatever. And they're asking, where, where, where's this money gone? That those sort of things have got to be proved at the moment. It's all speculation. Isn't it? Well, do, do, do you feel that the likes of Sam and Man should be investigated? Well, at the end of this month, the uh, accounts for, for Cardiff City Football Club are going to be on view in Company's House. They're going to be produced for the year. Right. The year gone. Right. So, I think that's when people can sort of investigate. But until then, it's all speculation. Not that I'm sticking up for Sam and Man, and not not that I'm. This is not any p impartial views, then, if you like. It's just yeah. what I've picked up on on the people that I've spoke to, and obviously the meeting tonight. Yeah. So, again, we've come away from the meeting. We're all still Cardiff City fans, and we'll be supporting them on Saturday. We'll be supporting them next Tuesday against Ipswich, and uh, three games, and uh, you know we could be uh, saved from relegation, which is what I want more, more than anything. I really don't want to go down. Personal beliefs, I think we will get a ground. I'm not saying we'll get it this season or next season, but I think eventually we'll get it. There's too many things happen for us not to get it with the council and everything. That part of it, you know, has, has, uh, has done well for the club. Or oh, Sam has done well for the club because he's pursued that. And I personally believe that we will have the ground. Uh, finish off this conversation with your prediction for Saturday and next Tuesday. I hope it's Cardiff City 2-0 on Saturday and 2-0 next bloody Tuesday. Let's keep us up. Cheers mate.